What's up guys, Justin here, and today I've got the full review of the Samsung Galaxy S4. The Samsung Galaxy S4 is arguably one of the most anticipated phones of the year, building upon the success of the Samsung Galaxy S3. Consumers also had very high expectations for this phone, I have to say Samsung has met it in some categories but failed to meet it in others. The design of the Samsung Galaxy S4 in general remains much the same of its predecessor, the Samsung Galaxy S3, but the sides have been slimmed down to a smaller margin of 7.9mm and it weighs in at just about 130 grams. The sensors of this phone may include the thermometer, RGB light sensor, proximity sensor, magnetometer, hydrometer, hall effect sensor, gyroscope, gesture sensor, as well as a barometer and accelerometer. On the bottom, you've got your physical home button while the sides feature the capacitive back and menu switch. And of course, the bottom has your standard micro USB port in order to charge and sync the device. On the back, you've got the traditional plastic cover and you've also got your speakers as well. In my opinion, I felt that the placement of the speakers wasn't really that good as when you're putting it on your desk to watch videos, for example, it may become muffled and the way you may grip your device when you're watching videos by holding the phone may also cover the speakers as well. Although I really enjoy the style of this phone, one of the biggest disadvantages I have to comment on is the fact that it has a plastic back. The plastic back makes this premium smartphone feel somewhat cheap and in terms of build quality, this phone really just doesn't meet expectations. When it comes to specs, the version I've got here is the international 8 core version that has the Exynos 5 Octa processor clocked in at 1.6 GHz, while the North American version will have the Snapdragon 600 processor that is quad core and clocked in at 1.9 GHz. However, the North American version has LTE, while the international version does not, but in terms of the benchmark scores in general and performance wise, you shouldn't really notice a huge difference. On the other hand, one of the most definitive features on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is its new display. It features a 1920x1080 resolution 5 inch Super HD AMOLED display coming in at a 441 ppi. Despite the fact that the eye cannot see beyond the 300 ppi mark on displays, the 441 ppi just gives you a much better sharpness and vibrance and the colors overall look really amazing on the Samsung Galaxy S4. And in my opinion, the display in general is probably one of the best features on the Samsung Galaxy S4, it just looks absolutely amazing. When it comes to software, it was great that Samsung was able to ship the phone with Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean and of course Samsung's touch with skin. Samsung has also brought on many new features exclusive to the Samsung Galaxy S4 with the new touch with skin and although many are quite useless and you probably won't use, a lot of them may be handy as well to some people out there. With Android you definitely expect a huge level of customizability so I'm just going to walk you guys through that. So here you've got your home screen layout you need to pinch and you're able to add more home windows. You can also select which one will be your home screen. You can add up to 7 of these windows there so you can see that you can easily change the home screen of your device. Just going back to the home menu there and we're just going to move on into the settings. The settings are also pretty fun to toggle as well and I definitely recommend taking a look at this when you first get your Samsung Galaxy S4 as there are just so many things you could do and to get the most out of the experience you have to really tailor it to your experience. You can see that the double swipe brings you the whole setting menu and it really just lets you toggle things on and off that you may need or not need and it is really quick to access which is something that I really like. You can also configure which one are going to be your priority level of settings and which ones are going to show up first on your tab. And another cool feature is also the multi window. By holding on your back button twice, it allows you to quickly select some of the most used apps. You can also configure that. We're just going to drag the internet app on stream and you can also drag some other apps to it. So for example, I'm going to drag gallery there and it allows you to use two apps at once on one screen. It allows you to really easily resize it as well and I found this really useful for using stuff like Google Talk for example where I want to respond to a message while browsing a web page but I don't want to exit the app itself. So you can just use the app just as usual and figure out how much space you want it to take up on your screen, drag it back and forth and you can really easily close it as well. With all the sensors built into the Samsung Galaxy S4, you definitely also expect Samsung to put some use to it and one of the things they have done is S Health. Not only have they created an app that utilizes many of the new sensors on the Samsung Galaxy S4, but they have also introduced some proprietary accessories as well, such as a weight scale as well as a wristband to allow you to track directly to the phone. It also gives you a really personalized fitness experience by entering your weight and your height, and through the barometer and thermometer, it also allows you to set your temperature and humidity comfort level as well. 
The app also gives you recommendations for your daily calorie intake depending on your size and height as well as your age and it allows you to pretty much scan the barcode or submit a photo of what you've eaten or just manually enter it and although many people may not want to commit to this, if you do it will definitely be very useful. Samsung has also utilized a new IR blaster with the Watch On app. What this does is it allows you to connect it to your TV box as well as your TV itself and control everything just from your smartphone. It allows you to add your favorite channels for quick access and go to them with just a push of a button and it also shows you the TV schedule from your carrier as well. And overall this actually worked much better than I thought. With the universal remote, it allows you to access most of your settings such as the number pad and it also allows you to control your channels and volume, your source and mute button as well. And overall, it is something that I'll definitely be using and something that I feel that Samsung has done a really good job in creating. The Samsung Galaxy S4 also has S Voice as well as Google Now. With S Voice, it pretty much allows you to control all your basic features, for example, calling, texting, setting up a schedule, social media updates, calendar, for example, and you could pretty much tell that I haven't really been using this a lot. Some of the more useful features you can use with S Voice is driving mode, which pretty much allows you to toggle it by saying Hi Galaxy and allows you to use more than major settings of the phone such as call, text, navigate, play, and weather, allowing you to not be physically distracted while driving. On the other hand, Google Now of course is integrated with Google and it pretty much gives you some of the more major information showing up as cards on your home screen. For example, we've got the Sharks and Canucks game on the schedule there, the weather in my local area, you can also add many more cards as well to your customizability, and pretty much it is a convenience factor which really allows you to just quickly access it and give you the information you need. You can look at the multitasking, you can see that it's very easy to access by holding on your home button, you can just take a look at all your apps and you can also close all of them at once as well. So now running you guys through most of the major settings you can see here, it pretty much handles all the wireless things such as NFC capabilities. And with the My Device, it really allows you to customize your device, starting out with the lock screen. There's the swipe, face unlock, face and voice, pattern, etc. And for now, I just have it on the swipe effect. And there's also the unlock effect, the ripple effect. So many things you could do with this device. And... There's also the multiple widgets you can have on your lock screen for easy access. And going back, there's also the display. Of course, you can also set your wallpaper as well as live wallpaper as this is an Android smartphone. And going back, there's also the notification panel which allows you to configure all the apps that you may want or settings you would like on quick access. There's also the adapt display which allows you to pretty much have the display adapt to itself in terms of the contrast and brightness depending on your location, um, depending on the brightness of your location as well. There's also the auto rotate, screen timeout, and although a lot of these settings are really basic, I definitely recommend people take a look at them as through default there are some of the settings that you may not want or like and may want to take a look at that. There's also the low battery notifications, charging, etc. There's also the sound settings through when you receive a call, the ringtones, etc. Um, just take a look at that and we're just going to go back. There's just so many settings that you have to look through on the Samsung Galaxy S4. And in terms of the home screen, you've got the easy mode and the standard mode. And one of the things I noticed with the Samsung Galaxy S4, there's just so much default things added to the phone itself. And although this may be an advantage through all the new features and functionality added to the Samsung Galaxy S4, one of the biggest disadvantages I noticed is that the device only has about 8 gigabytes of usable storage, despite the fact this being a 16 gigabyte device. So I do imagine that most of that space is being taken up by all the default things with TouchWiz, Android, the OS itself, and of course all the apps that Samsung has pretty much added into this and a lot of which you cannot delete. So in terms of the software and functionality, I felt that the Samsung Galaxy S4 is nothing short of it. There are just so many features and functionalities built into it. However, one thing I was kind of unhappy about, I'd say, is that the fact that a lot of these pretty much took up that 8GB that was already taken, and that only 8GB were available to us to add our own apps and widgets, etc., and media as well. The Samsung Galaxy S4 also has many smart features as well, utilizing some of the eye tracking and hover features. So here you've got the air view, air gesture, smart stay, smart scroll, multi window which I already showed you guys. So let's just go through with some demonstrations. So when we look at the smart play function, what it does is it tracks your eyes and when you look away it will automatically pause the video and when you look back it will automatically play it again. Although this feature worked well, I did find it to be quite gimmicky as a lot of times I may not have actually looked away but it just paused the video itself simply because my hands were there. 
When it comes to smart hover function, what it does is it allows you to hover your hand over the screen and it will give you a quick preview. I found this pretty amazing, however a lot of times, again, I did find it gimmicky when I really didn't need it, but it just automatically quick hovered for me. So for some people this may be useful, but for others they may not enjoy it. Where I really found it useful was the email app. Sometimes when you're looking through all your emails and you may have so many emails to look at, it is really easy just to quick cover and take a look and read the message itself. This is where I found it useful. Another feature is also the smart scroll, which pretty much allows you to scroll through web pages, for example, using your eyes. And in my opinion, it did work when it did, but at other times it was again a little bit gimmicky. Apart from all the eye tracking features, there's also the smart gestures, which allows you to, for example, scroll through your web pages, and here I'm demonstrating it with my gallery, where I'm just scrolling through my photos, and in the beginning, I really didn't know how to use it, but I have to say just a tip, you have to be pretty close to these sensors in order to have it work. So although many of these features may seem cool, I definitely recommend taking a look at these settings in order to customize it to your liking, as a lot of the times it may become pretty annoying when it automatically uses a gesture when you're really not trying to. So now moving on to the performance, the Samsung Galaxy S4 definitely proved itself to be a powerhouse. The version I've got here is the Exynos 5 Octa with a 1.6GHz quark speed and it came out with a Geekbench 2 score of 3414, which for many out there may actually even exceed a computer. When you look at the Quadrant benchmark, it came out with a score of 12447. And after running Antutu benchmark, it came out with another impressive score of 26,688. So when it comes to the gaming, you definitely expect the Samsung Galaxy S4 to perform very, very well. And from what you can see here, running somewhat intensive games such as Asphalt 7, it definitely is nothing short of it. And in my opinion, I think the gaming performance and the CPU performance of the S4 is definitely top notch. In my opinion, the camera is probably also one of the bigger features on why you would want to upgrade from the Samsung Galaxy S3. This features a 13 megapixel rear facing camera with full HD 1920 by 1080 resolution recording, while the front facing camera is a 2 megapixel shooter. So overall the rear facing camera definitely looks amazing and with the higher megapixel count, it definitely gives you good detail especially when you're cropping your images. So in terms of the photos, I have to say they definitely look really, really great. You can see that the sensor definitely captures all the details of the elements here, and the colors, although a little bit oversaturated and over contrasted, definitely look really nice and the colors really just pop out to you, which some people may like and some people may not. When it comes to the video quality, it is definitely what you may expect from the Samsung Galaxy S4, and it overall does a pretty good job, though sometimes under heavy sunlight it does seem a tiny bit blown out. But all in all, I have to say the colors and everything definitely look great in the video recording of the Samsung Galaxy S4. In terms of the front facing camera, it does a pretty good job as well. It comes in at 2 megapixels and the photos overall look pretty good, but the main thing I predict that a lot of people will be using this for is stuff like Google Hangouts, Skype calls, etc, and it will definitely get the job done. Samsung has also done a very good job on the camera OS. Now they also introduce the dual shot mode and you can also switch the cameras very easily by hitting that button. And when you take a look at the settings, it also includes many new features that photo enthusiasts in particular would enjoy, such as the white balance, exposure, ISO, etc. And through the modes, they also give you many new features as well. Some of which may include the beauty face, best photo, best face, sound shot, drama, animated photo, rich tone HDR, eraser, panorama, sports, and night. So there's just so many things Samsung has done in terms of the OS, many of which do work pretty well, but others some people may not use that much, but again, it is great that they have included it and it is always there when you need it. So now it's time to give you guys my thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy S4. In my opinion, it has stayed a lot like its predecessor, the Samsung Galaxy S3, but Samsung has added a lot of additional features to the software, many of which will be staying exclusive to the S4 itself. A lot of these features may also utilize these sensors, for example, and the new display definitely looks absolutely gorgeous and may even be a reason to upgrade for some people out there. The camera also looks really great, but all in all, there isn't really a huge reason to upgrade from the Samsung Galaxy S3, but in terms of the power-wise and functionality-wise, if you're looking for that, the S4 is definitely a great option. But one of the biggest things I didn't enjoy about it is the fact that the build quality hasn't really been improved from the predecessor, and although it is supposed to be a premium phone, it really doesn't have the huge premium feel to it. 
So thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out the rest of the playlist on the Samsung Galaxy S4 videos. I've done comparisons with all the other major phones out there right now, as well as gaming tests, full speed tests, the camera tests, and the unboxing video if you'd like to check that out. So be sure to click on the links on screen. The annotations will be there and the links will be down in the description as well. And I'll see you all in my next video.